This is only two days that I haven't filled it. And that's where it's at. And it was filled up to the top just two days ago. This is the tower garden in question. It did have a huge cucumber vine on it. It also had a cantaloupe plant, but those got attacked by disease and worms. So I pulled them off. Now it's just growing this monster tomato plant that I have done very little to no pruning on. So it is completely out of control. There are tomatoes growing in everywhere and it is very thirsty. But before I get to the maintenance of this garden, let me show you this garden for comparison. So this garden is my basil garden. It is 28 basil plants that I cloned here into the garden. I'm gonna be doing a video on this garden. And I filled this garden one time with water and nutrients. I filled the 20 gallon reservoir one time about three weeks ago. And let's have a look inside and see how much water it's used. Okay, in about three weeks, it's gone down what looks like about five gallons maybe. All right, so now let's go over to my monster tomato plant garden here. Let's take a look inside. And I actually filled this one all the way up to the top 20 gallons of water just two days ago. So now let's go take a look inside and see how much water this garden's used in just two days. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, so a couple things to address here. This garden's very thirsty. It's drinking about 10 gallons a day right now. And also, um, yeah, I let my roots grow down into my reservoir. I'm just as careful as one can be to keep the roots out of my pump. In gardens like this, uh, occasionally I'll make pump covers, but for this one I actually didn't even make a pump cover, so the pump is just sitting right in there covered by all these roots. I'm aware that it can certainly suck up the roots and get clogged, but I check this garden frequently enough and I listen when it's on when I walk over here to hear the water trickling, and if I don't hear any water then I know that there's a huge issue. Since I'm filling this garden with 20 gallons of water every two, two and a half days, I currently don't have a uh, water filtration system set up. Since I started this tower garden on tap water, I'm just gonna continue it on tap water. That's the most important thing to consider here. Stick with whatever you start your garden on. Because if I switch to reverse osmosis water right now, my pH would probably go all over the place. The plant has actually sort of regulated the pH in its own little natural environment within the water here because it's gotten used to the water that I'm giving it. Now the water that I'm giving it, I'll be honest, isn't really great. It's just from my hose. So what I'll do when I come in here every other day and see it this low, I just grab my hose and top it off. While I'm filling it up with the hose though, I also spray the pump. Now I can't even see the pump at this point. It's completely covered. So I'm just spraying where I know the pump is, hoping that the pressure from the hose is enough to dislodge any roots and kind of break up the area where the roots are surrounding the pump. And I'll take this all the way up to about 18 gallons. Then I'll pull out my trusty AC Infinity all-in-one meter and I can check my pH and my EC all at once here. Then I go back to the lab. Then I mix up a two gallon solution that's gonna buffer this garden and take it to where I want it to be. And where I want it to be is a pH of 6.0 and an EC of about 2.3. And since I'm in the flowering stage, I'm gonna raise the EC primarily with a bloom formula. So this is gonna be heavier in the phosphorus and potassium, much less nitrogen. I really don't need much nitrogen at this point. I'm still gonna add some and my micronutrients still contain quite a bit of nitrogen. I really am not gonna need that grow formula much anymore at all. So I'm gonna go really heavy on the bloom formula and my micronutrients. I'm even gonna add a little bit of calcium magnesium. And then I'm also gonna add 400 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide. This is 3% food grade hydrogen peroxide. I use this stuff so much that I actually buy 30% bottles and I dilute that down to 3%. So one of these bottles gets me 10 3% bottles. What this is gonna do is it helps keep your garden uh, clean. It's gonna help fight any root rot. You know, I pulled plants out of this so there is just root matter in there, uh, just dead and decaying roots inside of my garden, which cause a lot of problems if you just let that go. Hydrogen peroxide helps to kind of flush those out and move things around and get everything nice and clean. I'm not saying that's not gonna cause an issue. It will certainly cause an issue. I'm just hoping that these tomatoes grow out fast enough before my garden starts to develop uh, problems. If you're gonna use this 30% stuff, be careful. This will burn you. If you get any on you, it'll burn your skin and make a really intense little white spot. It does go away after about an hour or so, but 
it doesn't feel pleasant. Okay, so now that I have my buffer solution mixed here, I have my pH down to bring it to about 6.0 and I have and I have the exact nutrients that I need to bring my EC to 2.3 with more of a focus on the phosphorus and potassium, my hydrogen peroxide, and let's just go ahead and dump that into the garden. I like to hope that I got that close enough to run the garden and not hurt the plants. So now I like to run the garden to mix it all up. So we're gonna let that run its cycle and mix the nutrients and mix everything in there. Then I'm gonna come back and take a reading once it's all been mixed around. Okay, let's pull out my all-in-one meter again. I'll put a link to this meter down below. It's awesome, I can't recommend it enough. All right, and at this point, I would go back and make any other adjustments that I need to make, but it looks like I'm actually doing pretty good here. So I'm just gonna come back in two days and do the same process all over again. Now, as the plant starts to ripen and as my tomatoes turn more red, I'm actually gonna begin to gradually bring my EC down. As soon as they turn red and once they are getting ripe and almost about to pick, I'm gonna start to gradually lower my EC, almost down to what it would be in for the vegetative stage when it's time to actually harvest all these tomatoes. The reason you're gonna to wanna to do that is it actually tells the plant to divert its energy into just the fruit production. It doesn't think that it's getting enough nutrients because really it's not getting enough nutrients. So it just takes all of the energy that it would normally use to continue to grow and it just focuses all that on making really, really good tomatoes. Some refer to this as a nutrient flush, and a lot of gardeners will flush their nutrients out before they do their harvest. I really hope you're having a fantastic summer so far. I wanted to run a summer promotion this year where if you buy a tower garden through my affiliate links, I'll give you my Master Your Tower Garden $100 course. I'm just going to throw at you for free. So many of you have had successful grows after signing up and going through Master Your Tower Garden. I couldn't be more proud uh, to receive all the pictures and all the stories that I've gotten from you guys about your successful grows after running through Master Your Tower Garden. And you guys have blessed me and my family so much by purchasing Master Your Tower Garden and my other courses and eBooks that I wanna pay it forward. So I want you to let me know down in the comments or at humblegrowthhydroponics.com what school you think I should donate a tower garden to. I'm gonna pick five schools and each one I'm gonna donate a tower garden to and do a video on. One of those schools I'm gonna pick and it's gonna be here on Maui. The rest of the schools I want you guys to pick and let me know and let me know why you think that school should get a tower garden. So let's keep having a great summer. Make sure you're not working too hard. Get out in your garden, enjoy the sunshine and let's grow together. Mm -hmm.